I think when you're the, between the ages of like 20, let's say 26, 20, let's say, let's say 26 and 35 or 36, right? 26 because you just left university or you just maybe finished working, I don't know, um, uh, serve a couple of menial jobs in the service industry, whether they be bar work, pub work, and maybe you maybe moved, moved up and you've kind of got moved up, quote unquote, because um, I don't actually believe in that whole moving up. I think there's that's another lie they've kind of sold us over the years, you know, that you've, the promised land is working in the office. That isn't true at all. Um, if what you're doing working in a bar is um, allowing you to live the lifestyle that you want to live, and you have no aspirations to get further up the career ladder than just do what you're doing. You don't need to become a manager. Um, if anything, being coming a manager, that level of responsibility requires another level of effort, another level of mental acumen, another level of commitment of time, which people are not always um, uh, conscious of when they take that paycheck, take that raise, take the money. Because, you know, you have, to expect, you have to expect it. Like, if your place of work is giving you more money, they're obviously going to ask you, they're obviously going to ask more of you, right? They're not going to, they're not going to let you get away with what you got away with before being a weekend staff if you're then getting paid suddenly what somebody would be getting paid if they're the general manager. Like, that doesn't make any sense. But I've seen some people are not conscious of that and they kind of expect the same level of um, work-life balance when they uh, then take on more money. So I think don't get sold that. Don't get sold that dream of like, oh, the promise hands in office is not. Um, getting into office is the same sort of shit. It's the same bullshit. It's the same people, um, you know, with inflated sense of egos, inflated sense of self. It's the same people telling you something. Like, again, if you're someone like me who kind of essentially wants to do your own thing, you don't want someone telling you what to do, right? And wherever you work, it doesn't matter if you're a, a, a street cleaner, a dustman man, postman, uh, you work in a kebab shop, you work in a bar, you work in a hotel, someone's always telling you what to do pick this up, go there, do that, 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 that. Someone's always telling you what to do. And that's the frustrating part of anyone that has any kind of um, delusional idea that they can somehow do it on their own, right? Because it is quite delusional, right? It's quite crazy to think, oh no, I, I don't need to, I don't need to work in a, in a structured environment. I can do it on my own, right? It's quite crazy to say that, right? But it's not, right? Because there's plenty of examples out there. Plenty of people out there. Um, case in point, these two individuals I'm listening to on this podcast to, who are just, you know, apart from where they grew up and their race and their families and their interests, wherever they may be, we're two, we're exactly the same people, right? We're, but we're all human beings. Irish and Fear, Tim Ferriss, exactly like me, right? They might be a little bit further down the road in their careers, but they have essentially been able to carve out a little path for themselves that allows them to kind of be their own boss, right? To do things on their own dime. So much so that Irish and Fear essentially got kicked off of his own show of um, this is not happening and kind of, you know, brushed it off his shoulders and carried on going. But imagine if Irish and Fear was a industry writer, an industry figure and somebody that, you know, put a lot of credence towards him being the producer, executive director of a particular show. Imagine how so crushing that would be to get kicked off your own show and that not be your thing anymore and they not give you any credit and not pay you anything. But essentially, because you've got your own thing going on, if this one thing that you did for Comedy Central uh, falls by the wayside, they don't pick it up or it gets cancelled or the executive scum you out of the deal, you can just carry on doing what you're doing, right? Carry on um, touring the country, doing these comedy shows, writing a bit, whatever it may be. You, you always got something going on. You're never, you're never beholden to one person. And at the moment, you know, I think we all are. Whether you work in a bar, you work in the office, if suddenly the company goes bust, we're all fucked, right? And that's not where you want to be. You want to be in a place where if one client drops you, you've got four others, you've got one other, you've got three other um, things going on in the background that you can kind of, you know, kind of continue on spinning the wheels for. They're not going to be as lucrative maybe as sitting down at a desk and getting paid a certain amount every day of the month, a particular day of the month, sorry. that Don't get me wrong, but by and large, that's where you want to be. And I think I've always had that kind of feeling in me, but even more so that feeling was kind of drummed back home um, recently when I was sitting down with some colleagues at work um, and they randomly started talking about, I wasn't in a conversation, but I just overheard them talking about somebody at work who um, earned a very high wage. I think it was something along the lines of a 300,000 pound a year, which works out to about 14 to 15 grand a month. And they were talking about, oh, wow, man, that's crazy, isn't it? Like we're on 30 grand and this person's got one more zero on the end of it. Like, what the fuck are they doing with their money? Like, that's crazy. Like, what did they, what, what did they spend their money on? I remember sitting there thinking, like, that's gross, isn't it? Like, number one, gross, talking about some, what someone earns, I think it's super gross. Number two, um, fantasizing about what that person has, what they could make. And number three, I just don't care. I do not care. Just don't care. I have no interest. Like, it doesn't pull me. It doesn't make me think, oh, man, I really should hustle. I really should really make sure I hand in this project really early and show my boss that I'm staying in late and do all these things so I can get a raise and then I can be that guy, 300 grand guy. It doesn't make me think that. If anything, the first thing I think of is that, fuck, 
Has he ever gone home at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. any day of the week? Probably not, right? Um, he has to attend every kind of meeting that exists under a sun, especially a leadership meeting. Um, when you're that kind of level, you have to do those annoying things where even I did it at my small level, at previous, previous places I've been to, at a very minuscule level, where I went to, um, I don't know, Fashion Week, um, to, to uh, Paris Fashion Week, uh, Paris Men's Fashion Week, and I was there for like a day and a half, right? Because I had a meeting and then you have to come straight back, tiring. Then you have to go to Berlin, a day and a half, tiring. Imagine that level. Imagine him going to uh, a client meeting in Singapore, right, for two days, and you live in the UK. And the flight's 10 hours. It's like insane you know, the, what they have to do. And again, this guy could turn around to me and say, because, you know, it doesn't matter. I love my job. It's something I've always dreamed of doing. I've worked my way up here to do whatever. Da, 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 da. You, you could say that. And that's cool. I think if you're a person that loves your job and you find your vocation, more power to you. But to the person that's sitting there, like my colleagues who are just obsessed with the money and the salary, they're like, oh my God, wow, he's earning 300000 a year doing that. It's like you could earn 300000 a year just talking about Everton Football Club if you're a fanatic, right? We've seen so many examples of it, right? Like sitting, like those guys on AFTV, they're not any smarter than me or you, but they've decided to dig deep into their passion, double down, um, work extremely hard, right? That thing isn't, isn't, isn't easy. Traveling to all those fucking games, games you probably don't even want to go to just to get content, interviewing loads of people and then trying to extract the good ones out of the interviews you've done, editing that up, uploading it. Um, just, it's just tiring. I know that grind. I've done a little bit of it with my YouTube myself, but imagine doing it on the AFTV level. And I'm sure they earn a good amount of money and they just sit there talking about something they actually give a shit about, right? They all love Arsenal and, you know, the full-time devil guys, the same sort of thing. So to obsess over someone's salary and then they are, and then the, the benefit the full-time devils and, or any YouTube person has or any person doing their creative work is that you're not shackled to a desk. You don't have to be at a desk at night. Fair enough, the company I work for is a bit different because we have a freedom and ownership thing. So that makes things a bit easier. You can come in when you want, which is why I'm recording this podcast a bit earlier today. I'm going to go in later, but you can kind of make your own hours. That makes it a bit easier. But, you know, working on a desk and then getting, earn, earning 300000 a year, it just kind of defeats the purpose for me, in my opinion. Like, what's the point of earning that money if you can't leave when you want? <laughs> you essentially can't. You have to kind of, you know, keep up appearances and come at a certain time, leave at a certain time. It's just like, no, not for me. So I think when I feel, I think if, if, if you ever hear someone speaking like that and you feel the way I do and you're like, oh. I don't really care what they make. I'm not trying to sit here and make that money. I want to go outside of this and do my own thing and make that kind of wage. Then you're definitely somebody that wants to do their own thing. And I would encourage you to just use your workplace as a framework, as a kind of foundation for your other things. Like don't see it as like um, you're going to work in the gravel pits and it's a fucking hell hole. See it as this giving you the opportunity to number one, pay for your telephone bill, afford, afford you the wage to buy a camera, to, I don't know, take pictures of yourself, to buy outfits, um, to upload stuff onto the internet. Like see it as an opportunity, see it as a way, a place you're going to in order to kind of allow you to buy the tools and to use the services in order for you to kind of reach your dreams. And then what that will do is that it will make those Monday to Fridays more manageable. It will make waking up in the morning a little bit more manageable because you've got something to look forward to. Oh, yeah, I can't wait until I get back later after work. I'm going to do this, this, that, 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 that. Because those are obviously the most crucial times, right? The seven to ones. I I can do my things in the morning and kind of split in the evening, but that seven to one is usually a crucial time. So I recommend, I highly recommend you guys do that so you don't get a little bit down on work.